So up here at Grassy Bottom, I'm always looking to add more plants into the garden. And I, I often tell people, don't, you know, don't get carried away. Know your plants first, know what your garden style is, and then base all your purchases on that. And that's what I try to do. Now we've been away down to Bressingham Gardens, as I've recently videoed, uh, and a, a place called West Acre Gardens, which is a lovely nursery in Norfolk, as is Bressingham. But it's at uh, West Acre where I bought all these. So I got a little bit carried away, as you do. And what I thought I'd do was I thought I would do this uh, video on my selection of what I've bought and maybe reasonings behind some of them as well as to why I bought that particular one or type. So, as I said, try and choose carefully. Don't just go and do what I've just done here, which is two, four, six, eight, nine, ten plants I've bought here. But I bought them for a reason, spent a pretty penny on them. Um, some I've been looking for for some time. I come across there, thought I would, or hoped I would. Uh, and some uh, kind of impulse buys. But my impulse buys are a little bit different to the average person's impulse buys. Because I like to... I like to really um, buy impulse buys with the garden in mind. So, and by that I'm, I'm talking, I would make sure that that impulse buy will fit into the garden at some, at, well, in, in some area that I've got. So just be careful when you do go out, because we all get excited, we all get carried away. I do just the same. I'm no different to the next man. Um, but we've been away for four days now. Well, three days technically, but four days we've been gone. Just come back and I thought I'll just run through the list of things that I've bought. Now, the one nice thing to find when I got back here was that another rose has flowered again. And, and it's a beauty, this one. Can't remember its name, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about these, which we will. Right, so let's start with this one. Now, I've had this one at other gardens and I gave one away when I got up here, believe it or not. But I didn't give this particular one away or I don't believe, or I hope I didn't give this particular one away. Now, I'll go through it very quickly indeed. This is a sub, um, a shrub rather, a very low growing shrub. And by low growing, we'll read the label, it's, it has a height of 1.5 metres, so maybe three and a half to four foot, and then a bigger spread, so it spreads out wide to three metres. But the beauty of it is, it has this lovely autumn colour, as a lot of these do. And, and this is a euonymus. It's euonymus elata compacta. So it's a smaller variety than a lot of them. But most of them give you this lovely autumn colour. And as you can see, the sun's shining here up at Grassy Bottom today, and it's just looking absolutely beautiful. So that's my first choice. Now, we haven't decided where that's going to go, but I have decided that this time I won't be giving it away. And that's a fact. <laughs> right, another choice. Now, because I'm creating and I'm sat in the cloister pergola at the moment, as we can see. Just show you around again. You might have missed this if you've not seen me before. But this is the cloister pergola. Uh, and although we've got one, two, three, three roses at the minute, there's another fourth one coming. And I've got, uh, uh, I've also got... I've no clematis up this up this one yet. And what I've wanted was some types of clematis. A bit windy here at the minute. Let's just move that out of the way. So, there it goes again. Let's get him out of the way while we just video this one. Right, so, while I don't really, um, I don't really have a vast knowledge on clematis, there are certain types of clematis I like. And this is a viticelli. Um, so, I, I went for this one. Now, this one's called Clematis viticelli dark eyes, uh, and it, it's uh, the height. They claim after ten years it'll be two point five by a meter, so the height will be two point five, so seven, eight foot, maybe by maybe two and a half, three foot. So, what would that be good for? Well, if we take this as the example, that height there, it would do lovely up there. But I suspect, as with most viticellis, it will be a bit more rampant than that. I selected this one based on its colour. I just love these colours. Uh, Viticellis are quite late flowering uh, and you can pretty much leave them alone once they've flowered and just let them keep growing. And that's what I, I'm going to do with this. But it will go into this garden somewhere. I don't know where yet. 
sorry, it will go onto the cloister pergola and it may even, let's just put it there now. So it may even end up there on that very piece there. It may end up there. I don't know yet, but it looks very nice at the minute, but the color I just absolutely love. It's a deeper purple and it is coming through quite nicely on this camera. So pretty good. Now, the other things that uh, are in fashion at the moment, oh, in fashion, not fashion so much as this is their time to shine, as with Miscanthus's. This one here. Now, we, Kathy likes white in the garden, so I, I try and, um, what's the word for it? I try and humour her by getting a few different white plants in the garden. And I've always fancied having a, a white aster. As we all know now, they're called symphotrichums. Uh, but this particular one is aster. I'll, I'll show you the label because it'd be easier to show you the label than try, try and say it. Although I will give it a go. So that's Herbs Stetney. I don't know how you say that. But as with a lot of these types of uh, New England asters, and that's what the NA stands for on the New England aster, um, they are mildew resistant, as is this one. So that's a nice white one. And I'm going to mix that into the borders. I don't know where. I've got several over that end over there. Who knows where it's going to go? But just for now, let's put it there. It's not going to go here, but you can imagine in that sort of an area in a different part of the garden. Now, another one that I quite like the look of, and I had to fight hard with this because I was going to get one called Alma Poch. Um, Alma Pochki, and it's got a longer name than that, but I can't remember it. Alma Anderson, something or other. And it's a really pink one, and I really do like, although I say I don't like blousy flowers, I really do like the pink asters. I think they're beautiful. Now, this is more, what are they describing it as? Right, let's have a look. So, this one here is being described as uh, red tinged daisies purple with red tinges on on the actual daisy flower and and that is a good description of it really because that's exactly what it is and it's a really nice one now the one i've just shown you the white one over there i don't think that's going to get as tall as this one although i do believe it will because i saw it down at west acre and it, and it was roughly the same size as, as this one but i have a feeling that the white one may up here just be a little bit shorter but this is, again, a New England aster. If you're looking for something that's uh, mildew resistant, then th it's the New England types you have to go for. And that's just what I've done. I and I just wanted something a little bit different to what I'd already got, because I've already got the ones in the background there, the purple one, which I, I really do like as well. Uh, but that's quite dark. Uh, and that's Anna um, Marina Wolkomsky, that one over there, which is really nice. So this one here is really pretty color as you can see so this is going to mix in well with these asters and they are good for my grasses remember so they'll they'll mix in very nicely indeed so it's aster new england and it's a it's called james ritchie so if you're looking for it there you go try and find that one i chose this one just because of its color there were several there and i, I had to uh, stop myself from buying any more to be quite honest because it's very addictive buying asters especially when they're in flower. So again, we'll just plonk it there. We'll put it into an area where it's probably likely to end up in a similar area. So again, you get some sort of an idea. So that's nice. So that's a good idea to do it. In actual fact, look, while we're on here, let's just do a little walk up here with it. Right, so this is the area that I've got that I'm, I'm thinking it could end up being put with them as a complementary plant next to the other asters. So you can see, it's quite pink or pinkish coloured as opposed to the really deep purple coloured ones. Oh look, there's still wasps on it. This is how invaluable these things are. They really are not. There's a bumblebee now landed on it. So they're very, very invaluable pollinators. So, um, so what I'll do, I'll just leave it here for now. We'll sit it next to this small sorbus, which is called Raven's Wing. This one here, it's a lovely little one, but we won't talk about that yet. We will go into that very soon. So we'll put that there and move on to the next plant. Ooh, what else have I bought? Now, uh, every now and again, I let Kathy have a plant. And to be quite honest with you, she's chose what I class as invasive plants. Uh, I've got one over there, Honoring Joe Burr, we think that one is. 
and that's the Japanese anemone. And this one is called, this is a smaller one, it's called anemone a ruffled swan. So I'll let her have that one. It's It has got tinges of purple behind it, as you can see there, and then it has more of a white, and it is a pretty one. We'll have to give her that, yeah, she's done a, quite a nice choice with that one. Let's have a look what the description says. So, da, 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 da. it's a semi-double white flower with pay, pale blue on the reverse sides, which I've just shown you. And the, and the reason it's called ruffled, what's it called? Ruffled swan is because apparently this looks a bit ruffled. Now, forgive me for the whiteness. I've kept these in the car since last Friday um, and they've only just come out and it's Sunday now. Uh, and obviously what happens when you get them in a darkened car is they tend to lose a little bit of the chlorophyll. It's just the nature of the beast. But they're fine, absolutely fine. A couple of days out here and they'll all bounce back. Now, where am I going to put that one? I don't know. I don't know. I may end up keeping that one in a pot. Who knows? But that'll definitely go somewhere in the garden. And I'll probably put it in a pot because I want Kathy to enjoy it more than probably what I'll enjoy it. But anemones do look good in the garden, as you can see there. It looks fantastic. Now then, now then. Right, sorry if I'm sniffing a bit, but autumn's upon us. And my nose has started running again with rhinitis, as they all do. Right, so. You didn't think I'd... Uh, not by yet another grass, did you? Well, this is a zebra type, and this one's called Golden Fleece. And the reason I bought this one is I was actually looking for one called Alligator, which is uh, a pretty rare one that I, can't, I couldn't get hold of. But I could almost imagine that this is pretty much the same, although maybe not as big. And it's, it's classed as a good, strong grower, which is another reason I've got it. And it's going to go up to seven foot. It'll be a thicker uh, type than the, just the ordinary Zebrinus or Stricter, which are also zebra grasses. Don't forget there are other types of zebra grass, but this one is not easily available. So Westacre are very good at finding new cultivars that are really, really nice. And whether it's one of their own, I don't know. Does it say that? Uh, da, 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 ba, da, ba, da, da, da. Uh, it does have plumes, apparently it will flower, so it's only a baby, so it has some beautiful golden coloured plumes, a lot of them do. Don't forget, we are in miscanthus season, as you can see through that wire, just there, the flowering or seeding, call it what you will, uh, and that will produce them as well, and it's a very strong grower. And I can see it's starting to grow again there, it's pushing up new uh, leaves, but we won't worry about that this time of the year. I've simply got them ready to go in. That will go in. I've only got one other zebra grass in at the moment, so I intend putting that in because it's a strong grower. Now, we'll just sit it there simply because it's going to keep it safe. Right, euphorbias. You know I like euphorbias as well. Love, love euphorbias. And this is one that I've had before. Trialled it at another house. It never lived. Uh, they tend to be a little bit tender these ones and this is called euphorbia cross pasteurii uh, and it's an hybrid between stygiania and mellifera and it's supposed to be to be honest a bit tougher than uh, both stygiania and mellifera but it's still saying it needs a well drawing soil in a sunny sheltered spot now it's saying it'll make it up to a night of 1.5 i've seen it bigger than that definitely i will find a place for this i'm hoping to be able to keep it for some years to come. Now, I don't know exactly where I'm gonna put this one because the areas where I know it'll suit, I haven't really got the spacing. But, you know, what do we do? We can pop a plant out and try this one instead. And if all else fails, we'll pop the other one back in if this does die, because <laughs> it might do, you know? I'm just like the, the other people. I'm, uh, I'm never sure as to when I'm gonna put it in. You know, don't forget, I've only been up here coming up to three years now, or the garden itself has only been in development just over two years or two and two and a half years. So we don't know, we, it might not survive where I'm gonna put it, but let's hope it does, and we'll give that a good go. So that one is Euphorbia cross per pasteurii. We'll show you the label again, in case you're interested in getting this one, because it might be a nice one, you might be able to grow it. If you've got some sort of a protected, some sort of a protected area, which is what I haven't got, because um, I'm up on a, I'm up on the Lincolnshire Wolds, and although we are protected by the plantings and the edge, it's still very blowy here. So we'll just put that one down there for its own protection at the moment. I shall probably hmm, maybe put that in the greenhouse or stand it in the nursery area over winter. 
Right, okay, what do we have next? Ferns. Because I, I am building this cloister area, I decided I'd like, I've liked this fern for a long time anyway, and I've had it in previous houses. And that. what I like about it is I think it's, I'm not sure if it's an evergreen one. Never really checked that. I cannot remember. I've, I've got that many plants and ferns in the past that I just forget, as we all do. This one's called Polystricum, and it's Cetiferum, and it's called Proliferium. So it's a soft shield fern. They're easily available. But I saw this one there and I thought, well, I'm going to have that one because I like that one. And that's probably going to end up in this area here anyway. So it's probably, I don't know where I'm going to put it. We'll maybe just put it there for the moment because we could plant it into there. Uh, and that's in the cloister pergola area. So it might, it may do well there. Well, it will do well there, definitely. Whether it stays there, I do not know. Right, one thing I always tell you is geraniums. Geraniums are like the backbone of any garden. Um, a friend gave me this one not so long back, well, a year ago, and it's called uh, Geranium Py I think that's Pyrotherium, the, the PR stands for, I'm not sure. And Bill Wallace, a particular variety that I absolutely love. Uh, it's a very small one. I don't think I can focus in on that. It's not focusing very well. Let's try and come from the other way, see if we can focus. This is definitely worth looking at this flower colour itself. Let's see if I can tap on it to focus it. No, typically not having it. It's just not showing. Ah, oh, there we go. So that's a little bit better. It has the most lovely, what would that be? A purpley colour uh, and small. And the good thing about this one is it will gently seed itself around. Now let's have a look at its description. It's going to say, oh, it's going to make 12 to 24 inches by 12 inches. So it's, uh, it's good in borders, and they're recommending that you put it among shrubs, which I agree totally on that because it is a beauty. In fact, that's showing the colour better now. That's, that is a stunner, you must agree. So that's really, really nice. That's geranium. Bill Wallace, really nice. Uh, and again, that may end up starting its life in the pergola area. I don't know. Again, we will play about with this in the next week or so. Two more plants. Now this one, I've been after for a while. I had to take some advice on this a couple of months, in fact, three months ago. Will it survive in Britain? The person said, yes, it will. It's a little bit more tender than the ordinary fats here, but it should be okay. And I really like it because of that. And it gets quite big when it gets going. So it produces a lot bigger flower than that. Uh, it's from Taiwan. So it's, uh, Deeply indented leaves, it's, it's listing it adds. It adds a tropical effect to the garden. And, and yes, certainly, that's why I have Fatsy Japonica over the other side of the garden. This is going to have to occupy a similar area to what that one is, if not with it, just to show the difference. Because sometimes it's quite interesting to put plants like this together that are in the same family. With this one, uh, it's not a Fatsy Japonica. This is Polycarpa, and it's one called Green Fingers. Obviously, why it's called Green Fingers. Some, some plants... I often say, why the hell did they call it that? Well, in this case, you can see why they call it green fingers. Now, this, although it's uh, from, a did it say Asia? I'm sure it says uh, Taiwan. From Taiwan, it will make minus 10 and be okay. With a lot of fats here is what you find when we get to that this time of year, it, they tend to lose some of the leaves. It doesn't really worry them and by next spring, they'll pop back out again and they'll have new leaves coming up and the old ones I simply take off and remove and now I've got no doubt I'll be doing exactly the same with this one so that's full fats here polycarpa let's show you the label itself there you go green fingers a lovely jungle style plant so that would if I could find the right place for it and we'll demonstrate would look absolutely beautiful with and actually while I'm talking maybe this is exactly where I'm going to pour it I'll have to move a, pers a sanguis orba but this is exactly where it would probably look good because there's a contrast between that and the Miscanthus giganteus which is that one there and that's really really nice so that, I think that just might make it there so we'll leave it there for now to remind me that's what I do if I can't remember that's what we do and now look here this is looking lovely as well Gertrude Jekyll Rose once more opening it up up again and it's producing other buds i suspect not many more will survive because i think the winters might just finish for some of them but not all of them right now then can you believe this right quartered area pampas grasses to you and me this is one called uh, quartered area tiny pamper 
Now, believe it or not, and I could not believe I've come across this one. This only makes, let's put it in a better position for you, only makes two foot in height and width. So fantastic for pots, plant pots, fantastic in a restricted area. If you like pampas grasses like I do, Cortadarias, let's show you the other one I've got here called Patagonia. That's a, a relatively small one as well. What we call dwarfing varieties or dwarf varieties. Um, but this one is just amazing. It's called Tiny Pampa. I've never come across it before. I was amazed to find it. And it's producing the typical, it's almost Pumilla type of uh, seed head which is going to look really nice. Um, I suspect it was found probably, or came from a Pumilla seedling, maybe. Who knows? Who knows where these things come from? Let's have a look at the label. Da, 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 da. No, don't say. Sorry about the delay there, but it doesn't say. I like to read it. Um, I forget what I'm reading when I'm at the actual nursery itself because I, I get a little bit excited. You know, it's all exciting. This. So, yes, look at that. Can you believe there's a pampas grass that makes no more than 0 0.6, according to the label, by two foot? So its spread will probably be two point... Um, what? Two foot, I would say. Yeah, two foot because they do it a different way around. So I should say the spread will be two foot and the height will be less than that. So probably a foot and a half, if you're lucky. It will go into a pot, absolutely beautiful. It's tiny. I love it. I, can't, I, couldn't, I cannot believe I found this. I cannot believe it. It's so exciting to find that. I know I'm a sad geeky, but anyway, for people looking for a smaller type pampas, that's the one to go for. Cortaderia tiny pamper. Look it out, see if you can come across it and, and try and get hold of it. Fantastic. So there we go. The plants I bought when I went away. And believe it or not, we went away for three nights and we'd only left two hours when I bought all them plants. So two hours into the journey, I actually bought all those plants and they've been sat in the car ever since. Uh, but as you can see, there's no real harm come to them. Yes, they're a little bit lighter green than they should be, but that will bounce back and pick up. So I've got some cracking plants and I just thought I'd show you my plants what i buy and why i buy them but the one i'm most looking forward to is this uh fatsia polycarpa which i'm really looking forward to seeing this because I, I really can uh, very rarely can grow this type of plant but here actually if i put it there it's going to have loads of protection so that'd be really nice next to that uh, miscanthus giganteus type which is jubilaris and it should complement well okay so there you go there's the type of plants I'm growing, or what I buy and what I get when I go to the nurseries. So Westacre Gardens is in Norfolk. It is on the internet. You can see it. I, they don't, unfortunately, do mail order. Um, but nevertheless, if you're in the Norfolk area at any time, pop along. It's, it's, uh, it's at Westacre, a little village called Westacre in the middle of nowhere in a walled garden, a D-shaped walled garden. I've done a little YouTube on that particular place it's definitely worth going to uh, and if you get around that area go to it and have a look so there we go hope you've enjoyed that little uh, foray around my new plants i'll talk to you on the next one Ta-da!